to the Church of the Holy Cross. My name is Jonathan Bennett. I'm the Associate Rector here and also the Campus Pastor for Daniel Island. And really glad that you've decided to join us for worship. If you have joined us live this morning, we would love for you to join us in the chat box. Say hello and actually just have some kind of conversation with folks. Let them know you're here and tell them how you're doing. Great to have you engaged in that way. If you're new, make sure you fill out the digital welcome card that will pop up there as well and tell us who you are, where you're from, and we will get back in touch with you about more details about what's going on at Holy Cross. Encouraging now just to prepare your space for worship. Take some time to make sure your space is settled and that it's a peaceful space where you can focus on worshiping the Lord and hearing from his word. Maybe light a candle or have a, a Bible handy if you'd like to use that as well during the service. And just prepare your heart now with just a moment of silence before we pray. Quiet our minds, O Lord, and gladden our hearts, that as we gather together, we make it open to your presence and find that this place is the very gate of heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Finds his inmost melody 
death is just the doorway into resurrection life. If I join you in your suffering, then I'll join you when you rise. And when you return in glory with all the angels and the saints, my heart will still be singing and my song. Dearly beloved, the scriptures teach us to acknowledge our many sins and offences, not concealing them from our Heavenly Father, but confessing them with humble and obedient hearts, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. We ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before Almighty God, but especially when we come together in his presence to give thanks for the great benefits we have received at his hands to declare his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things which are necessary for our life and our salvation. Therefore, draw near with me to the throne of heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and, and our, our mouths mouth shall proclaim, proclaim your, your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O, o Lord, Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let us now join together in praising the Lord by saying the Jubilate. O be, be joyful, joyful in the Lord, Lord all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and, and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures from generation to generation. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him and to which God has called him. 
This is my rule in all the churches. Was anyone at the time of his call already circumcised? Let him not seek to remove the marks of circumcision. Was anyone at the time of his call uncircumcised? Let him not seek circumcision. For neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision, but keeping the commandments of God, each one should remain in the condition in which he was called. Were you a bondservant when called? Do not be concerned about it. But if you can gain your freedom, avail yourself of the opportunity. For he who is called in the Lord as a bondservant is a freed man of the Lord. Likewise, he who is freed when called is a bondservant of Christ. You were, brought, you were bought with a price. Do not become bondservants of men. So, brothers, in whatever condition each was called, there let him remain with God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to, to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending their nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Will you please pray with me? Now, Lord, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. Amen. Well, good morning. I wonder why it is that you are watching today. Some of you are probably wondering the same thing. You might be thinking, I could have still been in bed, I could have still been reading the paper, or perhaps out exercising, or more importantly, preparing for the big NFL game this afternoon. Go Pack Go, right? I want to thank the Alter Guild for making sure the colours were green and gold. Thank you for that. <laughs> But that's not what I mean. What I'm really wondering is, who is the reason that you're watching today? Whether it's the first time that you've attended a church service or the thousandth time, I don't necessarily mean at this specific church service either, but rather why you're sitting in any church service and why you're worshiping the Judeo-Christian God. I wonder if you can pinpoint one person maybe that God used to lead you to this point, someone who shared the gospel with you, the good news of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sins that he offers to those who repent. If you thought for long enough, you probably could. For many of us, it would be our parents or maybe our grandparents or perhaps a spouse or one of our children, perhaps a friend or a neighbor, maybe a youth minister or a pastor or a priest. I wonder if you thought of someone already, would you just take the time and put that in the chat box? Just tell us who that person was and, and give thanks to God for them. Well, for me, I give thanks to my parents who raised me in a Christian home and they intentionally sought to disciple me through prayer, Bible study, family worship, stories of great heroes of the Christian faith, weekly church attendance, Christian summer camps, and more. But there were also some other people along the way and one person stands out in particular. He was a young teacher at my high school called Anthony. Anthony ran a Christian youth group at my school which eventually moved to his home. And every Friday after school, about 30 or 40 of us would head to his house and cram into his small living room uh, with him and his wife. And we'd sing worship songs and we'd study the Bible and we would pray together. This was a period in my life when I definitely knew Jesus as my saviour, but I was constantly struggling to let him be my Lord. But through the weekly meetings and the summer camps that I went to with this group, I grew closer and closer to Jesus. And I made a good or made good Christian friendships that have lasted to this day, including with our own youth pastor, Johnny Keyes. Through it all, Anthony modeled to me and to many others what a Christian should look like. Someone who's kind, someone who's compassionate, someone who's worshipful, 
someone who's patient, who's obedient, who's generous, and who clearly loves the Lord. Yes, the light of Christ shone through Anthony. Well, eventually I left home and I headed to college in another city, but I'll never forget coming home from college at the end of my freshman year and visiting my old youth group and seeing Anthony again. You know, it had been a tough year for me, but through it all, I had finally surrendered to God and to his lordship in my life, and it had changed everything. Well, after the meeting, Anthony stopped me in his hallway, and he told me that there was something different about me now, and it seemed like I had grown greatly in my relationship with God that year. Yes, even in that brief interaction, he knew, and it was so encouraging for me, and a lot of it was due to the foundation that he had helped to lay. What Anthony had done was to help make a disciple, not of him, but of the one that he served, Jesus. And he pointed me and many others to Jesus and had said, follow him. And many of us did, and we still do to this day. It has had a profound impact for the kingdom of God. What does that have to do with today's sermon, though? Well, we're in the middle of a sermon series titled The Call of God. We're talking about what's the next step that God might be calling each one of us to take in 2021. And in today's gospel reading, the writer Mark shares the story of how Jesus first led others to follow him. And because of that fact, you and I sit here today doing what we're doing. We know that Jesus was successful in making disciples who made disciples. The people who encouraged you and I to follow him were people in that 2,000 year long chain, and now so are we. And today it's my hope that we'll see that this is the role of all Christians, not just a chosen few, that all of those who enter into a relationship with God are called to go and make disciples. When we choose to follow Jesus, this is our call, and we catch people for the kingdom of God. So let's turn to our scripture readings for today and see what God would say to us through his word. And I'm going to focus on one verse in particular. First of all, in our gospel reading, we see that Jesus wants people to follow him. We talked about this last week uh, in the sermon that we had. and In Mark 1.17, we read this. And Jesus said to them, follow me. And Simon and Andrew, well, they do just that. We learn from the other Gospels that they've already spent time with him. They've heard him teach. They've seen his incredible power at work, his power to heal and to cast out evil spirits. So this isn't a completely blind act of faith. But following isn't as easy as they seem to make it, especially when we let our flesh get in the way. Following Jesus becomes hard then. Reminds me of the story I heard of a man who died and ended up at the gates of heaven. And... As his name was on the list, St. Peter let him in, and he gave him the usual tour. There were Catholics, there were Presbyterians, Charismatics, Pentecostals, all wandering around happily. Well, just then they passed a huge high wall, and over the top floated the sound of hymns being sung at loud volume. Who's in there? asked the newcomer. Shh, said St. Peter, tiptoeing past. It's the Southern Baptists. They're convinced they're the only ones up here. Now, for many of us, following Jesus can become about little more than following the beliefs of a particular denomination. and Every denomination is guilty of that. Or it can become just about church attendance. But Jesus says, follow me. It's not that denominations are bad or church attendance or even religion. It's just that all too easily we get wrapped up in following a certain set of religious behaviors rather than Jesus himself. We miss the point. The Apostle Paul is tackling the same issue in today's epistle reading from 1 Corinthians. He's trying to help the church in Corinth to understand that they don't have to worry about rules and regulations that have been made redundant by the cross of Jesus, his life, his death, his resurrection. 1 Corinthians 7, 17, only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him and to which God has called him. There's that word again. This is my rule in all churches. Was anyone at the time of his call already circumcised? Let him not seek to remove the marks of circumcision. Was anyone at the time of his call uncircumcised? Let him not seek circumcision. For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but keeping the commandments of God, following Jesus. What he's saying is that following anyone or anything other than Christ 
is a foolish thing to do. Only following Jesus can satisfy the longing of our hearts. And at its most basic, this is the definition of a disciple, one who follows Jesus, one who's turned from, uh, turned away from following anyone or anything else, one who's fixed their eyes upon him, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Well, secondly, we see in our reading that Jesus tells the disciples that he will make them into something. Back to Mark 1.17. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you. He's talking about forming them, much like the potter forms a vase on the potter's wheel. In one sense, God begins this formation even before we're born. We read in Psalm 139 verse 13. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. From conception onwards, you see, God has been forming us. And yet, there's also a second formation that goes on. There's a second formation as well. For those who choose to follow Jesus, those who repent and believe in him. In 1 John, uh, sorry, John chapter 3, Jesus says to Nicodemus that when we do this, we are born again. So we become infants, but in the spiritual sense. And just like a physical baby, there are all kinds of things we need to learn to grow into healthy spiritual adults. We need to learn how to worship God. We need to learn how to live in community. We need to learn how to follow God's will and not our own. How to read the Bible, how to pray, how to put others' needs before our own, how to give generously, how to live simply, how to share our faith with others, and perhaps most importantly, how to trust God. And as we do this, we move from being spiritual infants to spiritual children, to young adults, and finally, to spiritual parents, people who are making disciples ourselves and helping them in their spiritual formation. But even when we become spiritual parents, it doesn't mean that we stop being formed. In this life, we should be wary of ever thinking that we have arrived. Martin Luther, uh, one of the instigators 500 years ago of the Reformation of the Church, wrote of this process, this life therefore is not righteousness, but growth in righteousness, not health, but healing, not being, but becoming, not rest, but exercise. We are not yet what we shall be, but we are growing toward it. The process is not yet finished, but it is going on. This is not the end, but it is the road. All does not yet gleam in glory, but all is being purified. Spiritual formation, friends, is a lifelong process, but one that should be progressing and not stagnant. As one person put it, to be a disciple means that what you know is moving your heart and causing change in your character. There's a sense of forward motion. Well, finally, we read what it is that Jesus plans to form his disciples into. They are to follow him. They are to be formed by him. But then using a culturally relevant metaphor, Jesus tells his disciple that they will become fishers of men. And Jesus said to them, come follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. The mission that he's preparing for them is one of catching people. As we saw last week in John's gospel, follow me should always lead to come and see. Follow me should lead to come and see. And so the disciples are going to cast out the life-giving message of the gospel, the same message that Mark tells us Jesus proclaims. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Then they'll wait and see who else will believe it and follow Jesus too. And it won't just be a message they deliver with words. It'll also be one of action. Yes, they will preach and they'll teach, but they'll also reveal the nature of God's kingdom through going to the lost and broken and healing diseases and casting out evil spirits, setting captives free, just as Jesus has been doing and as he's intentionally, intentionally trained them to do. And like him, this kind of action will be motivated by love, by a deep compassion for the lost and the dying who are like a sheep are like sheep without a shepherd. In his book, Multiplied, Disciples Making Disciples, Francis Chan writes these words, 
Making disciples isn't about gathering pupils to listen to your teaching. The real focus is not on teaching people at all. The focus is on loving them. It's about loving these people enough to help them see their need to love and obey God. We're called to love those around us in order that they might see their need to love and obey God. While there certainly is a place for teaching, we don't need to know the scripture inside and out to do this. We don't need to have read all the latest theological books. We don't even need to have gone to seminary to get one of these funny things to do this. We just need to have hearts that have been transformed by the love of God and filled by the Holy Spirit. We give him our lives and by his Holy Spirit, he gives us the courage, the words, the power and the authority to fulfill his mission. You see, his grace abounds even in our works. So the question is, as we end, are you ready to lay down your life for Christ's sake? To follow him in order that he might make you a fisher of men. So that you might be a disciple who loves others. And so that those others might be disciples who love Jesus. Friends, I understand that this can be a daunting thing. And you may feel unprepared and inadequate for the task. I wonder, though, if you ever saw the movie The Imitation Game. It's a movie starring Benedict Cumberbatch that tells us uh, the true story of the cracking of the German Enigma code machines, machines used by the Nazis during World War II to send instructions to troops around the world. Cumberbatch plays a code breaker called Alan Turing, one of the unlikely unsung heroes of the Second World War, and one of the many people who played a crucial role in the breaking of the Enigma code, helping to save many thousands of lives. Well, during the movie, there's a line that's repeated three different times, and that sums up the theme of this film. It says this, sometimes it is the people who no one imagines anything of who do the things that no one can imagine. Let me say that again. Sometimes it is the people who no one imagines anything of who do the things that no one can imagine imagine. Think about those first disciples, fishermen and the like, trusting in the Lord and empowered with the Holy Spirit. They did things that no one could have imagined possible. We know from the book of Acts that 5,000 people were believers within just a couple of months of Jesus' resurrection, people being raised as his disciples, many who presumably never met or laid eyes on him. And by the time they all died, those first disciples had already gone to most of the known world with the gospel. Well, the same is possible for you and me, not in our own strength, but in the power of the Spirit that's available to all those who repent and believe. Yes, if we're willing to trust in the Lord, then empowered by the Spirit, we too can do things that no one would have imagined possible of us. We too can be disciples who make disciples. We too can love others in such a way that they want to know who this Jesus is that we follow. It won't happen by chance though. I believe there are some things we need to do if we're going to be disciple makers. Next steps that we may need to take. First of all, we need to choose to be a disciple rather than a passenger. Someone who's just along for the ride, if you understand what I mean. You see, some of us look like we're following Jesus, but if we're really honest, we're being led by anything but him. Led by our own wants or desires, or by the need to please others, or by the empty philosophies of this world. Second, we need to be in community with other believers, preferably meeting every week for worship together, and also to be discipled and to disciple each other. This means doing what we're doing now, gathering for corporate worship, either online or doing it in person, and being involved in smaller fellowship, in what we call life groups. Well, third, we need to regularly be in places where we can meet people who are not yet believers or who are new believers we can disciple. Yes, we are called to God for our own sake, but we're also called for the sake of others. Now, if you're a parent or a grandparent, you have a great advantage over others in this. It's your God-given role to raise up your children or grandchildren as disciples who make disciples. Not at some stage in the future, but right now. They are not the church of tomorrow, but the church of today. And they too can influence their Christian and non-Christian friends for Jesus' sake. 
And even if you're not a parent or grandparent, presumably you have school friends or work colleagues or roommates or teammates or neighbors or hairdressers or whoever it might be. Love these people well. Pray for them. Pray for them. Listen to them. Share your life with them. Share the gospel with them and see what God does. This is God's hope for you, that you might follow him, that you might be formed by him, and that you might fulfill his mission here on earth, catching people for his kingdom as you go. The great Anglican evangelist David Watson once wrote this, the words, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again, should not be mumbled, but shouted with ringing confidence. It is the greatest good news that we could ever know on this earth. Whatever may happen, the best is yet to be. You know, we recite these words each week during our Eucharistic prayer, but let them be more than just rote words. Let them be the message that we proclaim wherever we go. And let this be how we proclaim it. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let it define our very lives in order that more and more people will come to know and serve the risen Lord Jesus. Friends, the best is yet to be. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we love you and we're grateful for the fact that we can know you. Lord, we pray that we will choose to know you today, each person who is watching or here present will choose that Lord Jesus. And then we will step into a relationship where we follow you. We choose to obey you, to listen to you, to learn from you, following you. But more than that, that we will allow ourselves to be formed by you, giving you the authority to shape us by the power of your spirit at work in us. And then that we will fulfill the mission that you have for us, to be fishers of men, to go out and catch people for the sake of the gospel in the power of the Spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, now let us confess our faith by saying together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, good morning again. So good to have you here with us today. Just a, a few announcements of things that are coming up here at Holy Cross. First of all, if you are a newcomer, I just want to remind you, do sign that digital welcome card and uh, we'd love to get to know you better. We have some things coming up that we'd love to tell you about. and One of them is discovering membership. Perhaps you're ready to take your next step into being a part of Holy Cross. Come and learn about our vision and how we operate as a church. Join us at our Discovering Membership class. It's coming up really soon and you can find out more details by emailing ellen at holycross.net. Please do uh, take the time to do that. Also want to let you know about our annual meeting that's coming up. It's going to be on the evening of Sunday, January 31st from 6.30 till 8 p.m. And we would love to have you join us. Usually we would do that in person, but because of the pandemic, we're gonna uh, take the safer option, which is to do that online. So we are preparing that right now, and we would love for you to be a part of that. These are great celebrations of what God has been doing and, and what we're hopeful that God will do in the future year as well. So join us, you're going to get to be a part of a fun and interactive um, meeting. And we're going to have lots of great stories that are going to be shared. You're going to hear from people like you about what God's been doing in their lives. Come, I've already heard some of those stories. They're fantastic. And I know that you will enjoy that and you will be encouraged by that as well. So join us Sunday, January 31st. I'd like to call up Anne Hood, our organist. Come on up, Anne. And our director of traditional music for the past 
uh, 23 years, I think it's 23, Anne has been with us for 22 years, um, for 22 years, and sadly, we're going to be losing Anne. It's bittersweet news, uh, because we love Anne, and she's done wonderful things here at Holy Cross, but we're also pleased for Anne, because Anne, we know, is going to get to spend more time doing something she really loves, which is spending time with her grandchildren. Uh, and so super excited about that. And we are so grateful for you. We want to pray for you. But do you want to say something for us as well? Oh, yes. This has just been such a rich part of my life. Just every minute that being at Holy Cross. And it's been a wonderful way to, uh, you know, uh, church musicians. Mine has just been very blessed and um, that Jesus has led me here. And you all mean so very much to me. And I'll miss you terribly, but I'm going to bring the grandchildren to the family service. And we're just thrilled to death, and you mean so much to me. And I, I, I thank you all, and I thank all the clergy and all the clergy before uh, over these years. And just thank you for everything that you've done for me. Well, thank you, Anne. I'm excited to hear that you're not going to be a stranger. We'll still get to see you around, and that's wonderful. And like I said, I know Anne is really excited, even though she's sad today. She's also excited about this extra time she's going to get with her family. So we want to pray the Lord's blessing on her. So we're going to pray for Anne right now. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the gift of Annehood. What a blessing this faithful servant of yours has been at Holy Cross for the last 22 years. Lord, we are grateful for the music that she has uh, played, but more than that, that has, you have used to lead us into a place of worship, to be able to meet with you and to encounter you by the power of your spirit through that music and through the choir members that she has trained and raised up, Lord. What a blessing she has been. And Lord, we are grateful that she's not leaving this family, that we will still get to see her, Lord. And I pray that in her retirement, she will enjoy that time with her kids and her grandkids. And it will be a huge blessing as she continues to do your work just in a different way. We pray all this in Jesus' mighty and powerful name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Well, we're going to move into a time of giving now. Uh, something we talk about at Holy Cross is that the Lord calls us to be generous givers, to be regular givers as well, and to also be cheerful givers. Those are his commands to us in the New Testament. And so I want to encourage you to be a regular, generous, cheerful giver. There are various ways you can do that. You'll see them up on the screen right there, or you can just click on the link in the chat box as well, and you can give right now if you choose to. But I encourage you to please give back to the Lord. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to be. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet. And let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me. Take my will and 
Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. We now enter into a time of prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide the, those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Saviour Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvellous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honour of your name. Amen. Amen. At this time, I encourage you to offer up your own intercessions, prayers and thanksgivings to the Lord. And you can also use the chat box to add prayers there or to ask for prayer as well, to have someone pray with you. Let's spend some time praying with the Lord. Lord Jesus, today we give you particular thanks for the ordination of Chris Warner 20 years ago this week. We praise you for that, Lord Jesus. Thank you. We celebrate his ministry and all that you have accomplished through him and in him by the power of your spirit. And Lord, would you strengthen him now? Lord, would you renew him? And would you continue to help him, Lord Jesus, as he continues to seek to love and serve you and minister to your people? Would you lift up those who are on our hearts uh, John Dalrymple, Lydia Matthews, Glenn Ross, Banks and Keenan Cummings. Lord, you know what they are going through, whether surgeries or illnesses, whatever it might be, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you will bring your healing, that you will bring your strength to them, and Lord, that they will know your presence with them, that you will comfort them, Lord God. We also lift up the persecuted church around the world, all those places where people cannot worship you freely as we do today. And in fact, people lose their lives for choosing to follow you. Would you strengthen them and continue to give them a zeal for the gospel, Lord, to continue to seek to reach out to those who do not know you and to proclaim the good news, Lord Jesus, even at risk of their own lives. Thank you, Jesus, for those who are faithful in these countries. Protect them, Lord God, and continue to advance your kingdom. Lord, we lift up our new president, Joe Biden. And we continue to pray for peace in our nation, Lord God. Would you draw us together, Lord Jesus? And Lord, would you bring about your purposes in this country, whatever they might be? And help us to submit to you uh, and to sit, submit to you first, Lord Jesus. And we do pray for an end to this pandemic. Lord Jesus, would you bring an end to this? We thank you for all those who are on the front lines, doctors, nurses, paramedics, anyone else, Lord Jesus. Uh, all those emergency responders, we lift up our teachers, Lord Jesus, anybody else, Lord Jesus. And we, we pray that you will bring an end to this, 
that you will either by a miracle or by uh, just using uh, the, the God-given talents you've given us through things like uh, being able to create vaccines, Lord Jesus. Would you bring an end to this uh, that we might once again be able to walk freely, uh, Lord Jesus, and be able to be able to worship together um, in larger groups, Lord Jesus, coming together to proclaim your name. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. meeting in the evening at 6.30 p.m.